Welcome back. Today I thought we'd look at my entry for the Frantic Challenge. Let's... Wait a minute! This isn't my plane! Alright, so this is not my Falkwolf FW189A1L, or you all, or however you say that. This is Sir Murtex, and so what I thought would be fun is to look at both planes, there's mine, and see how we both dealt with some of the issues that came up when trying to make the plane to a scale model inside Stormworks. Because when you're building with blocks, there's always compromises. So we're gonna take a look and see what he did real quick. And then I'll go ahead and walk you through mine. We're not gonna be flying this day because it will be on Frantic's channel. And we're gonna go ahead and let him fly and experiment with stuff. But we're gonna go ahead and just take a look at some of the details. So uh, I'm gonna try to pop into my camera mode. All right, so let's take a look here. So if we come up, we'll see the planes are roughly the same size. I'm probably going to have a little bit more length on his, I'm guessing, uh, because I had to offset my larger engines with a longer tail boom. So I did that. He also has a nicer back end of the canopy, it looks like. It's more cone-like. I had trouble with that, um, but I didn't want to keep working with it, so I went ahead and just left it mine as is. And by the way, that is a very interesting canopy, this whole thing back here. Uh, you can see he actually has the guard here. So check this out. So in this video, which is of a real one, you can see how it spins the top turret, uh, the gunner spins the top turret, and then the back turret, he spins the back turret as well. So making that work in Stormworks is a little bit uh, frustrating for me. It looks like Murtak did a better job with that and getting the gun in place. Um, I just got tired of working with it, so I went ahead and tried to finish off the plane. All right, so what it was another issue with the planes? Well, that would be the engines. The engines on the real plane are pretty slim. As you can see, we got like a, what, five block thickness on his, and also looks like one, two, three, four, five block thickness on mine as well. But the difference is, you'll see that he has shorter engines, so he managed to get a smaller profile slightly, and that was by using <laughs> the actual car engine instead of the aircraft engine. So he was able to compact this down a little bit more. So that was clever. I didn't even think about doing that. I, <laughs> I was looking at electric engines. All right, so what else? Well, another big difference in our builds is I wanted to have the slope here. So if you see, he has his guns in place and then he has a flat brick structure. On mine, I went ahead and used the actual... Uh, air surface to make the slope because I wanted that slope on the plane that goes down here so that kind of caused me issues with the guns so if you see I kind of threw in a stick -em on gun on the bottom here um, there's also some things and I don't know if they are radars or antennas and he's got the thicker pipe version down here I went ahead and built just an antenna and then also in this left wing is a little antenna uh, I don't know if he did the left wing antenna. No, there's none there. Landing gear. Uh, he used the older wheels because there was a bug. And the way he built his landing gear is probably closer to the real thing than I did. If we look at my landing gear, I did a little bit of the, the flaps uh, using pipes. All right, so another thing looking at the planes side by side that stands out is I think his canopy captures the, uh, the real plane a lot better. Like I said, looking at the back, I think he did a better job on getting that cone shape, whereas I have more of a, I don't know, glass house kind of thing going on here. And also, because I was fighting with the size of my engines, my canopy looks a lot smaller to me. And I think they are about the same with also he used different glass. And I think I like how he did this. You get a better view in his cockpit, whereas mine has the uh, kind of the netting here. So, very cool. I like how uh, he handled that. Overall, looking at the planes, I think his is a better scale version of the real plane than mine. Mine is kind of uh, artistic creation, more so it feels like. All right, well, paint scheme. All right, so his paint scheme, he actually used the technique with the paint blocks to smooth out and give a more organic feel with the paint job camouflage, whereas mine is more of a digital camel this time because I tended to put all of my logic in the wings here. I didn't want to have to have blockiness and non-blockiness. Plus, by using the control surfaces as a wing, 
you know, I can't do much here with blending this in. So there is that. Um, I'm okay with the digital camel this time, so, but I would have preferred to do it in this manner. All right, so let's look at the bombs now. Okay, so he has two bombs. They're made out of rocket parts, it looks like, and blocks and fins. And he has them offset so that they fit tightly together like the real thing. Um, I approach the bombs using the floodlight, the spotlight, as a tip and then a rocket part for the back and then the fins of course so roughly the same just different parts in the front and back and i did not offset mine a mine sit next to each other all right not too bad okay so let's look at our exhaust systems really quick here i'm not sure where his is i think it's right here so let's see so he uses fluid blocks for his exhaust system um, on some of the models that i was looking at the exhaust system was actually the the pipe coming out the sides in the uh, inside and outside. Um, I also have my air to intake rather large and then of course my gens and then he has a smaller form and there's these two dots that sit on both right and left and he kind of duplicated that look and feel which looks great. And what else do we have? Well we went with different uh, artwork, of course. He's got the yellow stripe in the back. I've got the yellow stripe with the German sign and the E1. I didn't, oh, looks like I didn't finish. I don't have my German sign up here. Kind of missed that one. Also don't have, now that I'm looking at it, I don't have a port to refill the plane. Um, I do have my artwork here on the side. And he has his artwork on the side as well. And then he did the little ooh, uh, I don't, ooh, ah, ooh ah, I don't know how to say that logo here on the side. And of course, I went with the the E skull here, the end of skull on the side. So yeah, so <laughs> we did a lot of work. Apparently, he's a lot faster. I spent a lot of time jerking around with logic. I hate logic. Um, let's go ahead and look on the inside of the plants just to see how he approached his cockpit. And I know for a fact that he went ahead and. Uh, tried to make it as accurate as possible so everything is in German so I can't tell you where he put some things but uh, this is very close to the real thing he's got the artwork on the side artwork down here buttons and stuff down there looks great and then if we go to the back he has a seat right here and then in the plane this was a I think this was a map pack or something like that for the navigator and then back here, these are supposed to be um, the ammo for the back gun. And so that is his. Looks great. This is, I think, the shell catcher for this one. I didn't even think about that, but this is a box that was for catching the shells. Very clever. And that is the inside. Oh, also, he approached the uh, top gun by raising it up. This is like a circle. I think this looks good, actually. Hmm, not bad. I like that a lot, actually. Mine is kind of a lower profile, and then I tried to kind of suggest the round shape, but I'm not really crazy about how mine came out there. But if we go inside, mine is laid out more like, I guess, my usual planes. I do have the little backpack here on the right, and then I have my lighting over here, my uh, magnetos, flaps and everything in the front, my prop pitch and my throttle. And then if we come over here, we have the navigator on the right. And then we have the back seat behind me here where you can kind of sit with the gun. And then there was this metal structure in some of the uh, cutaways that was back here. I had the lighting here for the cabin, more so for the front. And then on this right side, on one of the pictures that I looked at, was a uh, flare holder so these were flares and then of course they had the radio on the right side and then again i have another light here and then of course i have all of my uh, gun things i think there's supposed to be another roll right here must have deleted an accident when i was making that and then of course i have another seat back here and this allows you to move the the canopy left and right a little bit kind of spins it left and right just a little bit and then up and down on the gun not really useful but I went ahead and did it anyways just to see how it would work. And then we have the carpet. Did he do the carpet? Uh, it wasn't really carpet. It's like rubber pads on the floor or something. Let's see. Yes, he has it on the floor as well. Uh, 
He also has the batteries here and the the, uh, the little compass here. I did not do the batteries on the inside. My batteries are actually sitting right here on the wing with all the logic. So that's where I kind of hid my stuff. So I think that is it. Oh, I know what else. I cannot stand trying to jump up on any plane <laughs> to catch these little handles. So on my planes, I usually will hide, try to cleverly hide the uh, ladder so you can easily jump up on the plane. Just climb and you're done. Okay, oh, 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 oh. I could not find information on landing lights. So I went ahead and did the landing lights usually where they appear on American planes, American bombers. So I put them here. He actually has landing lights, it looks like, down below here on the bottom. So I don't know if this is accurate or he just kind of went with it, but I couldn't find any information on landing lights. So don't know. I'm guessing he might be correct on that. But uh, for the most part, I think we did a pretty darn good job of getting our planes to look scale. Uh, with the information available online and of course building in a block game. So let's go ahead and head back into the editor and check out how I did a few things. All right, so we're back in the editor and this is looking at an early version of the plane, early color scheme as well. Um, I actually have the front cowling, uh, just the brown colors and the, the uh, gray. And then I also have uh, this part right here. So what I did is I went ahead and deleted this because it was making the plane look a bit thicker than it should and it just wasn't right and then of course I extended the booms to offset the size of these engines um, if I was to look at the profile compared to the real one this is a rather short area where it should be quite long so it's not to scale as far as in the game meters wise it's off it's actually like four blocks longer than it should be so I guess another meter long um, but I think it balanced out the plane just by tweaking and compromising on the blocks. All right, so this is another version with the extended tail now, the extended booms, and it also has the uh, sides here cut off like I was talking about. And then, if we come out of this mode here, you can see this is my logic, and these, if we just do a delete here, there we go. There's my batteries. So the batteries are upside down and just placed here. Uh, what else is with this version? Oh, this was an experimental version. So on the real plane, the prop pitch was controlled by this little spinner here. So it would spin, I think it counterspun. Uh, it wasn't really clear on some of the forms. But I tried to do a little test to see if I could put this spinner separate from the body of the plane and put it on a pivot. And let's show you what happens when I did this. So what happens is it looks like, hey, it might actually work, but then it spins. And just because the pivot is placed back, it will kind of, I guess, jar a little bit and it breaks the uh, props. So killed that idea. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and load the plane up here. And I just wanna show you the cockpit uh, up close and personal. All right, so to get in the cockpit, you have to come over here, jump on here. And boom, we're up. See how much easier that is in trying to jump for these little handles? Hate those handles. All right, so what I did with the cockpit is I have my fuel gauges, my batteries, um, my generator and indicators. And if I just turn on this master cutout, we have the bomb select. So we can drop two, which would mean we would drop the two inside bombs. Or we can go ahead and click this and changes to dropping all four. Um, we have flaps down there. You see them right go there, go down a little bit. And what else do we have? Prop pitch, and then we have our ignitions. And if we just flip this on a little bit, they jump right on. You just leave them on. And that's it. Okay. Um, on the right side, we have RPS temperatures. On the top, we have airspeed indicator, altimeter throttle setting and prop pitch, which I don't think are hooked up. I think I need to hook those up before I release this version. And of course we have the parking brake on and off. And then of course we have the lighting. And then of course we can sit in this seat, which is fine. And we can sit in the seat. I love these. These are actually probably the <laughs> best feature added because you can just sit right in there. And if you come back here, you can just sit on the floor. Oh, it's going to the left. Oh, it's going to the right. 
and then of course turn it a little bit. Like I said, I just experimented with it. Nothing too big. All right, well, that's it for today. If you haven't done so already, you want to go ahead and hit the bell so it goes ding dong when I upload a new video. And if you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit subscribe if you'd like to see more videos. And you should be seeing both of these planes on Frantic's channel in the coming weeks. So go ahead and head over to Frantic and hit subscribe, and you'll be able to see these things fly. All right, that's it. I will see you next time. Bye!